it's Laura Eubanks of Design for Serenity with your succulent tip of the day and great progress in the Undersea Odyssey coral reef project in my Vista backyard. Um, I had a consultation in Escondido this morning, uh, but still managed to get quite a bit done today. Uh, let's see, where did we leave off yesterday? I basically just had the majority of the bones in um, in the terraced part of this space. This really is a perfect square. And I didn't know, you know, how this was going to play um, in the middle. But I'm actually really happy with it now that, now that, you know, it's starting to really take shape. You guys are so awesome. And thank you so much for all of the suggestions. I take them all. But I'm very methodical how I do this. I'm very focused and I'm not going to put sprinkles on the cupcake before I have put the batter into the cups. Okay, let's give you a minute with that. In other words, I go step by step. So, uh, however, you were so inspiring that I did do a couple of things that I wouldn't normally do until the end of the project. First thing being the driftwood your suggestions to put things in the nooks and crannies. I was looking out here last night going, God dang, they're right. You know, I hadn't even really looked at the driftwood from that, that standpoint yet because that's, that would be something that I would do at the end. But then I remembered I had that Marsha rafter hanging vase. Uh, remember back in the other garden that was under the purple pergola in, um, in the backyard or maybe you don't remember because you know it wasn't front and center, but how freaking perfect is that? Um, then I've got a couple of pieces of coral stuck in there that my neighbor gave me. And you know, I'm sure we could do more, but again, remember the three R's of good design, rock repetition, and the biggest R for me, restraint. So I decided to take a pill. Um, what I added today, was more I added another blue glow the smaller one over there and my euphorbia anti purpurium this is a little aloe topaz cutting that I got from Susan our client that gave me the whale bone and the porpoise skeleton um, really cool aloe that I used to see quite frequently and haven't for a long time so it's going to be interesting to see what this does here as a cutting. I popped a couple of mangaves in up here. I also unpacked my glass balls and I started working out some of my, some of my caves and my levels in my terraces. Um, love this purple fire glass that I got at KRC Rock. I just absolutely love that. And I thinned out this Petalanthus macrocarpus a little bit. I, you know, in a garden this small, I can do whatever the heck I want. I can make these plants look any way I want. I can keep these plants looking any way I want. And I just wanted this lacier. So I went ahead and opened that up just a little bit. I got my mammillaria. I don't know, did I have that in yesterday? I feel like I did. <laughs> yeah, I did. Um, but again, started doing just a little terracing around here, started adding my different rock top dressings. I've got white creva, I've got burgundy three quarter, I've got black three eighths. Um, I've got these really cool pieces of green sea glass. I've got my little um, La Paz. Uh, then back here, you see, I also laid in my flagstones and I staged one of my Oro Verde rocks in the corner there. Thought that looked kind of cute. Um, I've got this Euphorbia. What is this again? Tell me in the comments. Euphorbia, what? I rarely ever use this. This is another one. Is this the leucodendron? Yeah, this is the leucodendron. This is um, one that I'm going to have to really keep after because I want it to stay like that, along with this really, really cute little monkey tail 
cactus. I've got some Athona capensis that I started here. And this cute little barrel cactus cluster that was gifted to me by our very, very dear Gordon and his husband, Scott. Thank you for the housewarming gifts. You guys are the best. And tucked in a couple of little things down here. This is super cool. I've got one of my Euphorbia. What is this again, guys? Oh, come on. I know this one. Um, it's like my snowflake. Euphorbia has kind of a hostile name. Anywho, that looks amazing in this open pot rock. Um, and then a little torch cactus right here. And thought that I would take just a minute. Some of you ask, how do I lay in my flagstones? Um, I will show you the lazy girl's approach. Now, if you are planning on putting furniture on your flagstones, you're going to want to be a little more methodical than this. But this, this is just for looks. So what I do is I lay them down in the pattern of my choice on a, you know, a, on a fairly flat surface. So these are, generally speaking, pretty level. Um, they're a little, a little tiny bit wobbly, not terribly. So I'm just going to take soil and sprinkle it over the stones. I haven't done any prep work underneath whatsoever. I just put the stones right on top of the ground. I like to leave about an inch or two in between the stones um, as joints. Okay. Then, after you've slopped some soil, this can be decomposed granite, it can be sand, it can really be, you know, it can be rock, it can be anything you want. Um, but I'm doing the dirt, okay? Then, take my broom and just sweep it, the dirt in between the joints. so that it's fairly level. This, there's a drain right here. So I just put burgundy three quarters down there to protect the drain. Okay. Now, you know, you might find at this point that you've got some that are clearly sunk a little bit too low, like this one. So I'll just lift this up, move some dirt in there, set it back down. There we go, fixed it. Okay, now, once you're satisfied with that, you're going to take your hose and you're going to set it. And then once that settles a bit,
you're gonna take whatever rock medium, you know, or whatever your final, um, your final stabilizer is gonna be in between your joints. I'm going with this little La Paz rock. So you just sprinkle that on. And then same thing, just sweep it around. And it's really that simple. I've done all the way where Greg is, if you want to turn around, you can see I've done that treatment on all of these flagstone. I just haven't got the, uh, the little pebbles down yet. That'll come tomorrow. And I also completed all of the stones over on the other side of the garden. And I want to show you what you guys inspired. I was going to pin the first comment that suggested this, but then so many others of you suggested it too. The egg chair freaking genius so this morning I cleared a path it was so early and I drug that thing over here and oh my goodness yes it's perfect yeah, it's perfect thank you so much for having my back and for suggesting this in this spot. I absolutely love it. I can turn around. I can look anywhere I want in my yard. And it just looks really cute over here, doesn't it? And I don't, you know, I don't need a table or, you know, I'm good. I'm good. When I come over here to sit, that's all I want to do. I just want to sit. And if I've got my thermos of water with lemon, I can set it here or I can set it down on a stone. It's all good in the hood. I even have a footrest right here. How about that? So, woohoo! I am starting to see it. I think tomorrow is going to be a really, really big day pending Greg's ability to grab me some more soil and boulders because it's time. And I know there's still finished work to do on this side. Uh, but it's time to start working out the bones in the upper section. I also had an idea. And you know, if you haven't got your garden all figured out before you start, don't even stress because as you go, you, you'll figure it out. This, this concrete area here that was the putting green, I was gonna throw pebbles down in there and stage pots, um, but I had an idea why not turn that area into a beach with play sand? And then like this, what inspired me was my succulent chair. I love this thing. And I thought, how am I gonna work this succulent chair into this undersea garden? And then I thought, well, if Greg cuts the legs off of the chair, I could stage it in the sand on the beach, like it washed to shore and make something really cool out of it. So we can have a whole thing down here. Um, you know, I'm still not sure if that's going to work. I hope it does because it would be amazing. Or if it's going to be a hot mess and sand will be everywhere and Bentley will crap in it and the neighborhood raccoons will, you know, I don't know. But it's worth a shot. So, you know, we'll see. First things first, though, we got to get this done. So I will, I will start just left of center. I'm going to be looking through my front door and seeing where my eye goes. When I walk in the front door, where, what do I see if I look straight through the house? And that's going to be the money. Um, that's going to be the place where I start this upper level uh, undersea odyssey tapestry. So I probably am not going to be able to sleep tonight because I'm so, so excited um, to see where this takes us tomorrow. Um, I hope you guys can sleep and uh, I hope that you will send me pictures of your efforts. So many of you do at my Instagram at Laura Loves Succulents. Can't wait to see your work.
This has been Laura Eubanks of Design for Serenity with your succulent tip of the day. Bye, guys.